Welcome to today's episode of Celebrating Act Two with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hey, John, good to see you. Good to be on again. Uh, John, you know, I'm a big fan of your uh, newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet. And I recently, well, not too long ago, I guess, read about your trip to Louisville, Kentucky, mm. home of the Kentucky Derby. I had been there once and actually been to the track for a race, uh, but really didn't get to enjoy the city and the environs. I have, other than horse breeding farms, I have no idea what's in Louisville. Well, depending upon the year you were there, John, uh, there wasn't much reason to go to Louisville. Um, I've been going there since the mid-70s, and back then found it one of those kind of sleepy southern towns. Kentucky is, you know, is in flux. It went with the Union, but there were rebels and so forth. It's always been it's a southern town, it's a northern town, and it's kind of part, part of their... Uh, ego and identity, which uh, what they are. In any case, um, it was a, a very big burgeoning city in the 19th century, uh, center for railroad, uh, it was kind of a hub for railroads and like 50 trains a day would come in and so forth. And then it just declined like a lot of Southern cities during uh, and or after reconstruction and so forth. So when I started going there in the 70s, I said, well, this is nice and quaint, but the main street is all beaten up. There are these great old iron, iron, uh, iron um, uh, bound uh, buildings and facades, Victorian, 19th century America. So but they were all decayed and, and uh, decrepit and so forth. There were no museums to speak of. Um, they had always had the thing that drew people was the Kentucky Derby, and that's sure. only once a year. And as you say, the horse breeding farms outside the city, which are just very, very beautiful in the so-called blue bluegrass country. So I'd go every, I don't know, six, seven, ten years to see what was going on. There were always new restaurants popping up. And they always had some very good traditional old restaurants that I'll speak about on another occasion, um, like uh, Pat's Steakhouse, which everybody calls Min's down there, because uh, Mr. Min once owned it, and Pat's only owned it for 35 years, so, you know, newcomer. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, uh, so there's, a, there's a few of those types of places, and there's, you can get good fried chicken, you can get ribs and so forth, but there wasn't much to draw you, and I was waiting, and the town fathers were saying, oh, no, 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 we're really planning some big, big deal things happening in the arts, and it just never caught fire. Well, in the last, just the last five, certainly the last 10 years, it has, because those uh, buildings that I spoke about on Main Street uh, have now been completely renovated. They look like the, uh, those, what do they call them in San Francisco, the colorful ladies, uh, the Victorian houses there, um, done with great fidelity to their historic uh, nature. And the reason is because, although there's very little retail downtown because there's very little um, office buildings. They were taken over by brand new distilleries, bourbon distilleries. They figured ah. out what are we known for in Kentucky? Ah, bourbon. But they were all outside of town and there weren't that many of them. But bourbon has caught just caught fire in the last uh, uh, five to 10 years and uh, has just soared in sales. Um, and a lot of newcomers, and a lot of these newcomers, and a lot of the old timers, which had uh, you know Hiram Walker and Wild Turkey, which had a lot of money, but their uh, bourbon had gone way, way down in sales for a long time, came roaring back. So they bought up all of these property, these buildings on Main Street, renovated them, made them into made them into tasting room distilleries, and it's now terrific. It's just wonderful. It's uh, it's also where for at least 25, 30 years. Uh, outside of the uh, Louisville Slugger Museum, uh, there's a 140-foot uh, um, baseball bat, Louisville Slugger. Ah, uh, yeah. When they, uh, which was leaning against the building, and uh, when the the plans were brought to the city fathers, it says we are not putting a 140-foot baseball bat leaning against the building, and they said, well, here's the thing, um, we need a vent for the building. Um, a heating vent or whatever, and uh, nothing in the charter says we can't make it in the shape of a baseball bat. So that's how they <laughs> got away. So that's pretty cool. It's a wonderful museum. Um, so you've got that, and you go when you see all the baseball bats, so the famous 
famous baseball players, Babe Ruth, and so forth. And then they've opened the Muhammad Ali Museum. Mm. Oh, really? That's great. Uh, yeah, which is uh, remarkably large because, although he was a remarkably large figure in our culture and um, native-born son, you can also visit his childhood home. Um, and the gym where he trained when he was a teenager before the Olympics. But um, it, it it's exhibits are very good, but there's not as much of it as to fill four floors of this building, at least as yet. And uh, Mohammed's not coming back to fill them any further. But it's good. It's, it's a requisite thing to visit. There's a fine arts museum now called the Speed Museum, opened by the Speed family, which is very, very fine. Um, there's a Hayes, a Hayes Museum, which is devoted to modern art with changing exhibitions. There is a, a, a museum attached to a hotel called Hotel 21, which is attached to a, a museum which is built inside. Well, I guess the hotel is adjacent to the uh, museum, which is right there. You walk into the lobby and still and you see all of this, this art and artwork. Um, which is remarkable. Um, also, it's a very progressive city, unlike our friends in Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and so forth. Um, Louisville has proven itself to be northern in at least that aspect. Um, right on the right smack on the corner of Main Street, where this uh, this uh, hotel is, um, it has a life-size Michelangelo David who ain't got no pants on. <laughs> He's filled it in gold. And it's like, you know, welcome everybody. Because, you know, they're, they're covering up statues and taking them taking them down in places like Florida and they're taking books out of the... Um, there was, when I was there visiting a month or so ago, there was a drag show in town, like a circus, drag circus in town. Um, the exhibition that was uh, going on at that time was all LGBT. Q, and uh, that was uh, really quite uh, amazing to see in a city that you th would think would be much more conservative, and which I know of as a much more conservative uh, uh, city, and as I said, sleepy city that it used to be. So, and then there is Churchill Downs, which is has a down period at the moment because of the death of like twelve horses uh, over not at the. Kentucky Derby itself, but um, in uh, in the last two or three months, they slip, they break their legs, there's something going on, and it's been shut down uh, until they figure out what this is. The Kentucky Derby ran this year, second Saturday in, in May, um, as always. Uh, seats, not seats, standing tickets were going for $1,200, stand in the middle of the race track, and to get into the stands, we're talking five, six thousand dollars for yeah. one yeah. ticket. And I attended it years ago, maybe uh, fifteen years ago. Things weren't quite so expensive, but it's a great, great um, American holiday, uh, really. But they're going through some changes right now. But even if you're not going during that one single weekend, they also have the Derby Museum, which is one of the finest museums of American. Uh, uh, culture uh, of which horse racing is a predominant part, especially in that place. I mean, it's really fine from the um, the beautiful satin jackets that the jockeys wear to videos of secretariat and all of these great horses who, and there's a whole room of secretariat because he was, he was the greatest of all time. Um, he's, he had a heart, something like three times the size of a normal racehorse's heart. Um, and then they have a room with a, a diorama all around it, and uh, which takes you behind the scenes and and takes you to a running, you know, right on the track, and you see the horses' fa faces and so forth. Very thrilling, lots lots of uh, noise and music, and so it's something that's highly recommended. So just in the last ten minutes of me talking nonstop, uh, these are all the things you can visit in Louisville and uh, not have a problem running low. And then yeah. the food, which we shall talk about anon. We should, mm -hmm. and when we when we gather again and talk about the food of Louisville, we have to start with mint juleps, for God's sakes. Ooh, which is a traditional drink at the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. By the, by the way, I do, re I, I do remember uh, uh, in my teen years, uh, 
we did a cross country trip and one of the stops was in uh, Louisville primarily because of the Louisville slugger and the <clears throat> the, uh, the, the the manufactured bats out of ash woods and things like that but I seem to remember even low those many years ago uh, that they were famous for the river that separates them from Indiana and it's like it was like two different worlds being in mm -hmm. Kentucky and then at least in that part of Indiana. And uh, I remember riverboats where we had uh, V8 on a riverboat, which uh, I think s since uh, went they under, still, maybe they do, do they? They still have the riverboat and they have three quite attractive bridges, one of which is painted corn yellow in homage mm -hmm. to corn production that goes over to Indiana, right across the uh, right across the, the Indiana border there, across the river, is a very nice uh, gentrified section. As a matter of fact, a lot of gentrified sections of um, Louisville at this time, which, again, 10 years ago, you probably wouldn't even want to go into. But now uh, young people have moved in. They've taken over the houses and the, the shotgun houses. And uh, um, it's the lots going on. Sounds very... like a great place to visit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Good. John, thank you so much. Looking forward to talking about the food and drink of Louisville next time. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.